Live from the Gaylord Rockies Resort and Convention Center, this is the 2023 presentation of The Bowerman. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome these past winners of the Bowerman. In 2009, she set five collegiate records and won two NCAA titles. The inaugural women's winner of the Bowerman from the University of Colorado, Jenny Simpson. She was the first female in NCAA history to claim national titles in both the 100 hurdles and the 400 hurdles. The Queen Double. The 2010 women's winner from Virginia Tech University, Queen Harrison Clay. In 2011, he became just the fourth man to win NCAA Division I titles in the 100 meters and the long jump in the same year. Welcome back, Florida State's Ngoni Makusha. A four-time NCAA champion in 2011, she captured indoor and outdoor 400 meter and 4 by 400 national title sweeps. The 2011 women's winner from Texas A&M University, Jessica Beard. The 2012 women's winner, she became the first woman in NCAA Division I history to win back-to-back -back indoor and outdoor national titles in the 200 meters. From Louisiana State University, Kimberlyn Duncan. The first field event specialist to claim collegiate track and field's highest honor. A five-time NCAA champion in the high jump from Indiana University, the 2013 men's winner, Derek Bruin. This Gator swept long jump and triple jump crowns at the NCAA Division I Indoor and Outdoor National Championships during his senior season. The 2015 men's winner from the University of Florida, Marquise Dindy. Only he and Jesse Owens have won the 100, 200, and long jump in the same national outdoor championships. 2016 winner from the University of Arkansas, Jerry and Lawson. She set a collegiate record in the 400 meters and captured four national titles during her Bowerman winning season. From the University of Texas, 2016 women's winner, Courtney Okolo. In 2017, she set the collegiate record in the 800 outdoors and anchored a collegiate record four by four that secured the team triple crown for the women of Oregon. Welcome back, Raven Rogers. In 2018, she won three NCAA titles and reset the indoor and outdoor collegiate records in the triple jump. From the University of Georgia, Katura Orji. In 2019, he captured four national titles and broke collegiate records in the 60 hurdles, the 110 hurdles, and the four by 100 relay. College's Mr. 30, 735 and 1298 from the University of Florida, Grant Holloway. In 2021, he became the first in NCAA history to sweep the high jump and the long jump at both the NCAA Indoor and Outdoor Championships. From Louisiana State University, Javon Harrison. In 2022, he swept national hurdling crowns and became just the fourth athlete in NCAA history to hit 13 flat in the high hurdles. From Florida State University, Trey Cunningham.
2209, 2180, American record, collegiate records, three national crowns. This Wildcat was fast as lightning in 2022 from the University of Kentucky, Abby Steiner. Ladies and gentlemen, another round of applause for these past winners of the Bowerman. Track and field at its heart is a solitary sport. A runner in their lane, a jumper on the runway, a thrower in the ring. Practice can be a lonely pursuit, an agonizing effort to find an extra centimeter or lose a fraction of a second. We celebrate victory with trophies, medals, ribbons, individual glory for the longest, the highest, the fastest. But sometimes these incredible athletes compete for something big for their schools, for their teams, their country. Yes, each would love to be honored with college track and field's highest award tonight, but all will be celebrated as family, the Bowerman family. 6 incredible finalists, two magnificent trophies, one amazing night. Welcome to the 2023 Bowerman. Please welcome tonight's finalist. Nothing could stop this collegiate record setting freight train from scaring the world record in the heptathlon while winning the NCAA title. From the University of Georgia, Kyle Garland. You come down here looking like a middle linebacker that plays for the University of Georgia, <laughs> but you are a decathlete. Mm -hmm. Yep. How does that work? It just works, man. <laughs> I can't tell you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that, guys. Go ahead, sit down. <laughs> Long-standing collegiate records and the world U-20 record in the triple jump fell at the feet of this freshman Razorback. Undefeated this season from the University of Arkansas, Jaden Hibbert. So I, obviously you're at the bow, man. How does it feel? I mean, you just got that stand ovation. I, look, I thought I did good. <laughs> Clearly, you put me to shame. Well, it's one he beat, and that's what I do. <laughs> Go ahead and take a seat, my friend. Only eight men in world history have scored more than 8,800 points in the decathlon. This NCAA champion and collegiate record holder is one of them. From the University of Texas, Leo Neugebauer. some dap, so I feel like you should I'm so sorry. Oh, <laughs> slow. I got you. I got you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you don't got to be sorry, brother. You're at the bar, man. I mean, <laughs> obviously, you won best dress. I, I, I just feel like everybody just, is just going to just give you that title today. So explain the look for us. So my dad is Cameroonian. He's somewhere in here. Oh, right here. And yeah, so I'm just embracing my Cameroonian side. This is our traditional wear. All right, wow. right on, brother. Let's have a seat. Thank you. A 
undefeated in the 60, 100, and 200. Collegiate records indoors at 60 and 200 meters. She won five NCAA titles in 2023. From the University of Texas, Julian Alfred. Amazing, Thank but you. you walk, you walk slow, but you run r really, really fast. Like, what do we, what do we, what? Do we, how do you explain that? I don't know. I just save my energy for when it's time to run fast. You know what? <laughs> Go ahead. You can take a seat. Three jumps, three records, three NCAA titles. She dominated the long jump and triple jumps this year from the University of Florida. Jasmine Moore. So, from one gator to another, explain. <laughs> all right, explain to them what it means to be here. Um, honestly, it just means a lot. I'm so happy that I have such great support from the University of Florida. I'm just super thankful. And yeah, I'm just excited. Look, from one gator to another, you heard it best. Yeah. Go get us. You can go to the seat. <laughs> At 400 meters, with hurdles or without, in relays or going solo, this Razorback made the impossible look possible. From the University of Arkansas, Britton Wilson. So he, what is going on here today? So he clearly just said 400 hurdles or whip out. And you, you, okay, yeah, yeah, I hear you. Go ahead, Sugarfoot. But you're coming down, you're coming down, and now it's probably about 25 meters. How does that feel? Um, I feel, I mean, the heels are a little hard, but I feel good. I feel great. Hey, awesome. This is going to be a great night. Go ahead and take a seat. <laughs> Thank <here>. you. <laughs> Well, as everybody knows, this is the Bowerman 2023. I'm Grant Holloway, 2019 winner. And first and foremost, I want to say thank you to everybody showing up. Um, I had a really, really great feeling about all this. You know, Before we even started, I was telling everybody this is going to be one of the best shows that the Bowerman hosted. And I think we can, we can do that. To start all off, there's a gift. Underneath somebody's chair, there's tickets to the 2024 Olympic Games. So go ahead and take a seat. And okay, all right, all right, wait, 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 wait. All right, all right. I will see. All right, all right. I am. Hey, look, look, look. I didn't. All right. I apologize. I didn't know that was going to get that much attention. I, I, I will sit here and say that. Right, I'm so. Look, yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. I know, I know, I know. All right. Well, let me just go ahead and keep the bad news going. John. John Anderson is late. So I was told to just keep this going. He said he was in the bathroom, you know, taking care of a little bit of business. So with all that being said, you know, I always told John there was two people I always wanted to see late night. Okay, wait, that didn't come off right. Not my ex, not my ex, not my ex. But between Jordan, oh, you back. Okay, I, I, I finished the joke. Between George Lopez and John Anderson, at 2 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> you can figure out who was the better one. This is your host, John Anderson, everybody. At least he pranked you with Olympic tickets and not Taylor Swift. We'd have had a damn riot. <laughs> oh, crap, mortgage documents. Um, we need to warn our affiliates. We've already running over, right? By between the parade of nations and <laughs> the T's and the finalists. Um, thanks are coming. That's our show. And uh, we will bail the winner their trophy. So the, we'll go upstairs after this. No. Uh, we are here again. The 2023 Bowerman this year presented by Runner's Space. 
and I am here again. Sorry. Uh, I was literally attending the convention to get my level three throws coach certification, and the other guy called in sick. Here I am. Actually, I don't know if you believe that I'm getting massive nil money from a shoe company. Yeah, Johnston and Murphy. I don't know if you see this. Very nice. Actually, I came back simply because I wanted to see if Grant Holloway would really show up for an important final at a U.S. championship. <laughs> Do you remember the text you sent me before nationals? All three rounds, brother. Okay, I'm not a genius, but it ain't hard to miscount two. <laughs> or to see that lane five is open. It's a lot harder to count to 10. Not for the Catholics, it's not a joke. That's just how many times I've now hosted this presentation. And really, who are we kidding? I'm never quitting, okay? I've given it up. I'm not leaving, I'm never leaving. Uh, Denver, Orlando, San Antonio, Phoenix, I don't care, as long as we're indoors and all the jokes are when legal, I'll come back. Because uh, the way I see it, it's basically like this. You either like track and field or you're wrong. Which means tonight we are all in the right place with the right people. College track and field's greatest athletes, which means the world's greatest athletes, and the remarkable coaches who train them and coach them. Uh, like, this whole front row is all just gigantic points getter. Like, nobody's less than an eight. It's 10-8, that's all it is. Sam Seams, uh, I have no speaking fee joke for you this year. Uh, it's just, again, a sincere thank you for allowing me to be here and part of the most glamorous, my goodness, look at these people, and prestigious night in collegiate track and field. And to the US TFCCCA, President Carol Smith, where's Coach Carol, who is now President Carroll, thanks for not vetoing it. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. So really, we just sit back, we relax, we forget that the next my, forget in the next 90 minutes that four of your kids are entering the portal. It's okay. <laughs> just bask in the glory of the Bowerman. I mean, it's not that it won't happen that way, right? Uh, as winners of the Bowermans down front. All you people are stewards of the Bowerman Award. To our finalists, I say congratulations and remind you that while only two of you can win, all of you are spectacular, and all of you can ad uh, audition for Grant's job. <laughs> I want to make it really clear to you six, I feel like Jaden's made it really clear, that this is your night. We are here in this room to celebrate you. I know that is a lot of perspiration and preparation to go, God, what am I going to wear in Denver in mid-December? It's a lot of pressure. Seriously, to Grant and all of you past champions, a huge and a heartfelt thank you for coming back and supporting the Bowerman again this night. Fifteen <laughs> Bowerman winners are here. Uh, we have a special nod to Derek Druin the 10th anniversary of your Bowerman. Congratulations, we're glad you were here. We also think it's awesome that you have world and Olympic golds. Adds to the thing. Uh, all of you, your amazing accomplishments as athletes add to the stature and the prominence of this award. And more importantly, as caring and thoughtful people, you give these trophies their character and you give them their spirit. You make these awards meaningful for the winners that will come after you. And all of that, by the way, started with you, Jenny Simpson, and Galen Rupp, thank you. But because it is important to all of you, it is important to all of us. And as I glance down at this front row and the incredible athletes, it has dawned on me suddenly that if we had a four by four team, none of you dudes would make it. None. If we had a DMR, you're still doing nothing. You're just sitting there. You guys were killing the jumps, I get it, but it's track and field, right? 
Lee Grant, you wouldn't have to long jump. You'd be off the hook. Jessica Beard, you've been here 10 times, plus the year you won. That's more, than anybody, that's more than me, more than anybody else. And at least you had an excused absence for the one time you didn't come. She had to graduate, get an MBA. Yeah. She's a show off. Uh, Queen Harrison, this is your 10th, I'm told, that you've been here. And I recall when you were here the first time, you wore braces. And now you're a mom with orthodontist bills on the way. <laughs> Where's Nagoni? You're the senior most member of the Bowerman family on the men's side that's here. You left like 80 kids behind, because now you have your team at UC Davis, and we're glad you're here. Thank you so much. <laughs> the Bowerman family that's spoken of uh, so lovingly and so um, emotionally in the opening of the program, that's you guys. And because there are so many of you here, um, we're not going to be able to buy gifts for each other, so we'll have a secret Santa afterwards. We'll just draw names and it'll be fine and nobody has to worry about it. Uh, since all our finalists tonight are here and are accompanied by family members, uh, I feel like as part of the Bowerman family, we should recognize your family. So if the parents, the caregivers, uh, grandparents, sisters, brothers that are here of our finalists, please stand up so we can recognize you tonight as well. Mm. See, I feel like the seating arrangement makes sense uh, because without you standing behind them, they don't accomplish the things they've done in college track and field. We like our athletes to be humble. That's great. You're the parents. You can brag. You don't have to. You can be rightfully proud. Every parent thinks, oh, my kid's the best. Your kids are the best, <laughs> like for real. Um, all of my family is here tonight as well for the first time. I, I won't ask them to stand. That'll be embarrassing. But I'll tell you this, especially the female finalists, my 21-year-old son's here, he's eligible. <laughs> to you guys, my 20-year-old daughter's here, she's off limits. <laughs> okay? Listen, I trust you dudes, and I love you. But Jaden, this is the first time I've seen you in one day not wear Crocs. <laughs> By the way, do you have to give that back to Kimberlyn Duncan at the end of the night? I love it. It's fantastic. And just so you know, Jaden, so what we do is we're going to come up and we're going to interview up here, okay? We'll ask you like five or six questions. Geffy can't stop you just after two. <laughs> Got to answer them all. Okay? Kyle, tell you came along. I, I, I didn't, I was not aware of another train from Georgia except the one that came at midnight. <laughs> exactly. Woo hoo! We'll do it. We can sing when we get up here. Leo, what is it with the Germans and John Denver? Are you aware of this? Like, Take Me Home Country Roads is like the national anthem. I can't wait. If you win Olympic gold, they're going to play that, and people are going, what the hell's going on there? I also want to note, this is the first time I've ever been in the presence of two or more decathletes without my big gold book, um, which for you guys means tonight is totally pointless. <laughs> Julian, I am so excited. For the first time, you have to sit down and talk to me instead of me chasing around so that I have to sit down and talk to you, which is great. Uh, Britain, obviously, we'd like you to stay 26 minutes after, and we'll do the whole thing again. Uh, I'd also like to know, has there ever been an Arkansas home game where they did not introduce you between quarters? It's like six times. They keep trotting you out. It's amazing. Now if they could just win. Jasmine, I feel like I have been waiting two years for you to be here. Welcome. With apologies to Trey, you were Florida State before Florida State football knew what it was to be slighted. <laughs> um, in the incredible history, this is amazing, in the incredible history of Florida track and field, there are three athletes that have won seven individual NCAA titles. The other two are over there with Grant and Marquise. I'll let you tell me if you're in good company later. You don't have to answer that now. It is all very impressive. It's all very inspiring. In fact, it can compels me to tell you this very inspiring nugget. This morning I said a PR in the 5K. I ran 3K. Um, <laughs> our finalists are the best of the best. They join a lineage of the best of the best. It is a legacy that is unmatched. And every time I try to drive down 
uh, memory lane at the Bowerman, I find there's no place to park because of you people. Uh, I can't list them all, so I usually try to pick one thing that's um, indicative of all that you've accomplished. And so this is just straight stats from the ESPN people. Um, all of you, 66 finalists. Before tonight, we had you guys to the list. But the 66 finalists, 31 Olympic medals, 135 World Championship medals. Right, just let that wash over you. Uh, the collection of talent in the room is unmatched. In fact, uh, due to scholarship limitations, some of you dudes are going to have to walk on. Okay? <laughs> Maybe books and fees, we'll see. I'm going to simply finish with this. And I look and I see Kyle and I see Jaden and I see Leo and I see Jasmine and I see Julian and I see Britton. And I realize that you are all here together in Denver. And you were together at only three meets all season. Albuquerque, Austin, and Budapest. That's a hell of a thing. It is the 2023 Bowerman and our very first finalist is the world's largest leprechaun in green, Kyle Garland. They call Kyle Garland the freight train. And watching him compete in the multi-events, it is easy to understand why. Who's that coming down the track? A mean machine in red and black. A linebacker's build and a let's go attitude. Strong and quick, he powered past the competition to win his first national title with a record-breaking score in the heptathlon. His seven-event performance in Albuquerque finished just six points shy of the world record set by two-time Olympic gold medalist and Bowerman winner, Ashton Eaton. Outdoors, Garland cruised to victory in the deck at the SEC Championships for his fifth conference title in the combined events. And at the NCAA meet in Austin, he put up a number good enough to win every decathlon in the history of the championships, save one. Leo. It happens. All aboard the Kyle Garland train, a finalist for the 2023 Bauer. We should, let's start with the dog barking in the, off, uh, in the audience. Uh, tell me about the importance of your dad and how you're sitting here tonight, maybe because of that guy sitting out there. Man, I would not be up here tonight if my dad was not the person that he is in my life in this sport. You know, he was my coach from the time I started at seven years old to mm -hmm. the time I went to college in 2018. So my dad knows me on the inside and out. He is the guy. He is that guy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Are you rested up, man? Because you did a lot of decks in about that long a period on my day planner. Man, I'm finally rested up <laughs> after maybe, you know, five weeks, six weeks of doing nothing at all, eating what I want, you know, fueling mm -hmm. this freight train right, properly, you know. Right. Um, now I'm feeling good, feeling ready. Um, this indoor season coming up, I'm really excited for it, but, you know, I'm, I'm feeling back to my normal self. Where'd the freight train thing coming from? Because, like, I've seen you, and I'm like, <laughs> wait, all of a sudden now everybody's got a shirt on. Well, how this started two years ago, you know me. I'm a big guy, about 6'5", 225, 228 on a bad day when I eat a little too much. Sorry, Dad. But um, I was out of practice, shirt off, all oiled up, you know, running a, a, a flying 30. And uh, Coach Carroll, actually, she looked at me. She was like, man, y'all better move out the way. That's a freight train coming down mm -hmm. the track. And right before I was like, you know I kind of like the way that sounds, right. man. And ever since then, it kind of stuck, and I've been rolling with it. So before we get to the 10-event thing in mm -hmm. Austin, I'm going to go back to the 7-event thing in Albuquerque. Okay. Uh, as you get time away from things, right? I always end up talking to these winners at, at meets at SEC or at championship meets or the, the Texas Relays, and it's in the immediate aftermath mm -hmm. of what you've done, which is really a bad time to talk to a dude after he's <laughs> just finished up the 1,000 oh. and he's just, you know... Like, you were literally sprawled out there. Yep. Hey, can I have a minute? Um, <laughs> you've had some time away from it. Mm -hmm. uh, how would you characterize that performance now as you look back? There's only one word I can really say about that performance, and it's historic. You know, I mean, that was, for me, an outer body experience. I just kind of went in. I knew mm -hmm. I prepared, knew I did everything possible to prepare for that moment. And when I got out there, it was... It was beyond me. Like I've said it to you before, and mm -hmm. I say it all the time, it's beyond me. There was something else out there with me, and 
there was the energy, whatever it was, I went out there and did mm -hmm. something that I, don't, I only knew I could on that day. Okay, so I bring this up just because it's the factual thing. So you're six points from the world record. Don't remind me. Okay. <laughs> we can move on. No. Do you, <laughs> like, do you lay in bed and go, gosh, if I had done X or X or you just go, no, that number is amazing and I can live with it? I try not to. Mm -hmm. I try not to beat myself up too much about it just because of what I was able to accomplish at the age that I'm at. You know, it's, you, you haven't seen a performance like that since, mm -hmm. you know, Ashton Eaton in 2012. So being able to go out there and, and do that performance, I, I can do nothing but be excited about it. Uh, and then we go to Austin, and listen, it was a wonderful duel to watch. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it was like to compete over those two days, other than it seemed like it was tiring. Uh, how do you look back on, on that uh, that two-day competition between you and what really amounted to just you and Leo right. uh, over those two days? Another historic, historic competition. I mean, I talked with family, friends, coaches, and everything else, and I, I came to a conclusion and I said, you know, if you put your best effort, best foot out there and somebody mm -hmm. beats you, you can't really be too upset about that. So I have the utmost respect for Leo. What he did was absolutely incredible, but he's going to have to watch out this coming year. <laughs> <laughs> As we said in the video, the point total was good enough to win every single deck competition, except for the stupid one you were in. I know, right? Yeah. That's crazy. Well, he cheated. He had the whole crowd there. It was ridiculous. <laughs> right? Everybody know. Uh, the Philly Green, I love What's the most Philly thing about you? The most Philly thing about me, um, I got another nickname that not many people know. Let me hear it. There's somebody in the crowd that calls me that. It's Fresh Prince. Fresh Prince, Will Smith, you know. Yeah, I'm with yeah, you. I, yeah. I got to keep Philly with me close, and that's how I keep it close and bring it down to Georgia with But me. didn't he move to Bel Air? He, he moved, but you can't, you can't but take the a Philly dude there. out of Philly. You can't do it. Okay, cool. You can't do it. And you know what? I think Matthew Bolin, I think, DJ Jazzy Jeff. He did. Yeah. No, I, I don't think that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that at all. We're going to take a break uh, from, from your stories, and we want to hear what others have to say about you. In fact, the guy that sees you more every day in practice, uh, Grant's over there with Coach. Uh, Thomas. I mean, between <laughs> Fresh Prince, Freight Train, how do you keep him, I say this lightly, but how do you keep him fueled? How do you keep him motivated? How do you keep him driven? Yeah, he's, he's a different dude, man. They call him the dude. He's, he's one of them kind of guys that call you put him in any kind of situation and you love that about that. He's just a competitor. So if it's something that you can do, if you're flipping a coin, he's going to try and be, you can't control it, but he's going to try and win it. Between all the competitions, um, if you had to choose, you know, that, that moment, you know, that stuck out to you, that made Kyle Garland, Kyle Garland, what would you say it was? Oh, it would probably be the, probably the USA Championships we did out in Arkansas. I think that was a moment where you got to see the culmination of all his work, all those, oh, you almost hit that, oh, you almost got that, and you put it together, and uh, he got the collegiate record there and, and had, a, had a remarkable performance. And then to see his family and his dad and him just have that moment that you can see that was just building up and it finally got to kind of come out pouring, it, it was amazing. That family, I, I, I have much love for, so I understand exactly how they were acting, exactly how they were, you know, putting out that emotion. Um, the biggest thing is for me, sometimes I do the same thing with John Anderson when I see him at 2 o'clock in the morning. You know, I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> And he's over here saying, da -da -da, da -da -da. <laughs> John, can you, can, you, can you cut it out for me? Do you want me to do the da-da-da, or you just want me to pick it up? Both. Okay. I just thought you were taking it to the end of the show, quite frankly, the way you were going. <laughs> we're set. Okay, so we're back with Kyle. And uh, as always now, we like to, to just, you know, uh, lighten the mood a little. We've, great. We've heard about 8720 and the two days of competition. So I have my uh, trivial pursuit questions here. So you go ahead. Just, you just pick one. I'm gonna go to the middle. I like the middle. You know, middle. Okay. Oh, yeah. arts and arts and literature. Oh, this will gosh. be great. Arts and literature. What's the title of your autobiography? Qualified. Qualified. Okay. Uh, give me the last book you read or museum you went to. Oh gosh, the last book I read. Um, yeah, I'm currently reading one now. I'm forgetting the name of it because I haven't read it in maybe two weeks. But okay. I need to get back on that. That's right. Yeah. Well, we, we try to better you uh, beyond athletics when Thanks. we're here on this night all the time. <laughs> um, if we had a Bowerman talent show, this is really good for you because you play all these instruments. What would your act be? See, what you don't know, you said instruments, but what you don't know is my love for Michael Jackson. I would be out here dancing like crazy. Can you moonwalk? Of course I Let's can. see it right this second. I haven't done this since like middle since school. Since you put the book down? 
All right. I still got it a little bit. Still got it just a little bit. Um, just a little bit. Since we touched on Midnight Train to Georgia, if you were Gladys and I, give me three teammates who would be the Pips. The Pips? Three of my teammates? Yeah. Uh, I got to say my boy Ziggy. Okay. Ziggy, me and Ziggy sing all Do the I time. know Ziggy? You've seen him at a meet or two, okay. SECs maybe. Okay. Who else? Besides I got to put my Ziggy. boy Darius Carbon because he's just a goofy love dude, a high jump. Love a good high jumper. Love a good yeah, high jumper in there. And just to make him sweat a little bit, an old friend of mine, Johannes Erm. You know oh, Johannes. Oh, yeah, that'd be, yeah. Why not? I think he An Estonian fun. pip. I know, right? That would be amazing <laughs> to do that. I'm going to ask you one more. This might be better for your dad, because uh, it's a Philly group. Who, who was the lead singer of Harold Melvin in the Blue Notes? Teddy Pendergrass. He just jumped you. He didn't even know it. Ladies and gentlemen, Kyle Garland. <laughs> Before we let you go, all right, before we let you go, we got a guy that would like to say hello and, uh, and wish you well. Take it away, D. Good evening, everyone. I hope everybody's having a great night at the Bowerman Awards. I just wanted to give a shout out to the big dog, Kyle Garland. Congratulations on this uh, uh, Bowerman nomination. I've been keeping a close, on, close eye on you, excuse me, since you got out of high school and what you've been able to do in college has been absolutely amazing. Congratulations on a great career. Congratulations to you, your coaches, and the University of Georgia. You've represented them very well. And on behalf of uh, great American decathletes from Jim Thorpe all the way to Ashton Eaton, um, we know it's not over for you yet. But uh, congratulations and enjoy your night. No pressure there. I know, right? Gosh. Just follow Dan <laughs> O'Brien. Go get yourself a gold medal. Yeah. Thank you. Congratulations. Appreciate it. Our next finalist, Jaden Hibbert, University of Arkansas. Kids these days. At a school with a rich legacy of triple jumpers, Arkansas's Jaden Hibbert outdistances them all. Conley, Floreal, Walden, Howard, Lister, Wellman, Pullen, Razorback greats, national champs. But none ever landed deeper in the pit than Hibbert. The freshman from Jamaica turned 18 in January and then obliterated college records that were more than twice his age. Hibbert won both the SEC indoor and outdoor championships with a grand total of five jumps. It took him three to sweep the NCAA titles. His season best mark of 58 feet, seven and a half inches, wasn't just SEC or NCAA good, but the best jump in the world in 2023. He's just a kid playing in the sandbox. Arkansas' Jaden Hibbert, Bowerman finalist. So, uh, we said, tell me your PR. Indoor or outdoor? Uh, outdoor. 17.87 meters. 58, seven and a half. Does anybody know how far 58, seven and a half is? That's why we're here. Come here. <laughs> Buck, come here. Yeah, real quick, just come here. Head coach of the Arkansas Razorback, Chris Buckman. Buckman. So just hop up here. This is the board. We're going to put Buck on the board. He's right there. All right, Grant, show me, show me 58, seven and a half. All right, here we go, guys. This is a game of chance. How many think this is it? Raise your hands. Go. Wow. No. Dylan, you're horrible. <laughs> no? Okay, I'm gonna go to the next mark. Show of hands, go. Well, all you guys are wrong. You can leave, this is Squid Games. You're eliminated. <laughs> <laughs> what mark is that? Here, show of hands, go. Yep, all you guys, eliminated. Outside, go. Oh, by the way, this is Marquise Dindy. Dindy? <laughs> All love, <laughs> all love. But if we take one little dash of a step that equals whatever that equals, this is Jaden's mark, guys. So if you said yes, congratulations to you. You are still in the winning for $4.5 million, except this is the Bowerman, and you so, get zero dollars like John Anderson and I. Yeah, we just wanted to point out, though, that because you see the board, and then there's some runway, and then the pit. That's what, I, in three, a uh, hop, step, and a jump, 58, seven and a half. 
That's amazing. <laughs> Thanks, Buck. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, Buck. All right, my guy. Let's talk about this. First off, how are you feeling after Worlds? Because I know you had one jump and then we had to stop. How are you feeling? I'm recovering. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I went to the internet because you kids, you know, you like them social media things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God Laugh Peace and the Instagram and Wonder Kid. All right. Did you come up with that yourself, Wonder Kid, or did somebody go ahead and say, hey, I got a name for it? No, it was indeed um, one of the media companies, the Gleaner in Jamaica, they quoted me Wonder Kid one day, and I was like, okay, it's a cool name, I use it. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, you're big in Fayetteville, but you're huge in Jamaica. Right. I saw some of the video when you went back. What was that like last time you went home? Well, I had to vlog it, you know, I'm a vlogger. You um, vlogged it, yep. Mm -hmm. Like, everywhere I went, people were like, are you Jaden Hebrew? Are you Jaden Hebrew? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, Ugh. I was kind of scared. <laughs> but yeah, they love their athletes in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. But usually we got sprinters. Well, I'm different, so. Right? <laughs> I'm good. Like, what was the draw to that then? Cause, right, because everybody, I'm sure, wants to be, I want to be the 100 meter champ. All right, I think it's mostly my image and like I interact with people when I see them. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, be cocky or anything. And of course you can jump far and stuff, but it's mostly the image. How do you describe the season? Because most of us describe it like this. <laughs> you're the same? Uh, was there a difficult part of transitioning? I mean, you're young and you come from Jamaica and now you're in the middle of Arkansas, new teams, new coaches and new experiences. Yes, it was very difficult. Like when I, when I got here, I'm sorry, coach. I know I stressed you out. Um, <laughs> I got like five injuries back to back. <laughs> it was so hard to transition. One day I was doing split jerks in the weight room. That's why I hurt my shoulder. I was like, ooh. Mm -hmm. I told coach he was, he wasn't freaking out. That's all I love about him. Mm -hmm. but, uh, give me guys you like in the event. Like, is it Zango or is it Pichardo? Will Clay's out here, by the way. He's really good. Maybe just, right. you know. Where's Will? He was... There, oh yeah, look for the guy with the baby. Excellent. <laughs> so, as a kid, who'd you like? I would say, technically, I look up to Pichardo, but, you know, being friends and stuff like that, I would say Will Clay, but I don't watch Triple Jump if I'm not in it. <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> So you drive Geffy nuts? Sometimes. Geffy, does he drive you nuts? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm under control with him, man. <laughs> Grant, take it away. But I feel like for him to say that with Jamaican accent, yeah. everything going on, how do you manage what you said, wonder, not wonder, I'm wonder boy, you know, so I don't know if, I don't want to say you copy me, you know. <laughs> I just feel like I was here first, but how do you, how do you manage the wonder, wonder kid, right? Wonder kid, yeah. Wonder kid. A little lower, you know. What I'm talking about. <laughs> well, he's not—he's not a kid anymore. He's growing <laughs> into a man now. So he's putting the time, he's putting the effort in. He's truly a student athlete and uh, represents uh, his country, his family, and our university extremely well. So he's—he's he's easy to manage. Yeah, I believe it. If I'm not mistaken, three, right? You had good old Bowman, where Jerrion, yep. Aiden, and now, oh wait, another Jaden. Jaden. Right. <laughs> okay. Cool. Yep. What makes him? different out of everybody else? Well, the, I, you know, the difference is... The, Other than the, being young. You know, he's, uh, he's obviously <laughs> very young, and, and to be so coachable at such a young age is just, is just unbelievable. You know, one thing I would like to strike on, though, is the similarities. Mm. And when you look at special athletes, and there's so many right here with these Bowerman finalists and, and the three that I've been so fortunate to, to coach is they flip that switch. And just like you, Grant, when the lights are on, it, it's game on. You know me, should I still got it? You should probably it. try the decathlon no, at some relax, point, relax, relax, relax. <laughs> We got a couple of decathletes here. <laughs> All right, well, I, I feel like John was once a decathlete. He did 10 events and 10 ESPN shows between talking. There's kids in the room. Never mind, I, 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 won't, I won't keep going, I'm sorry. No, I, don't want, I want no part of that. Um, <laughs> I like, to, is, I like to start slow and, and then ease back when it comes to it. Um, we just heard from Dan O'Brien. What do you got? What do you mean by that? I'm lazy. <laughs> That's simple. Uh, we heard from Dan O'Brien. We have another uh, special guest that would like to say something to, uh, to Jaden here on our big board. 
Uh, hey, Jaden, congratulations on a fantastic year and be nominated for this prestigious award. It's been great to watch you jump. Um, lovely technique, uh, off a short approach as well, I think. So super impressive. When I was your age, I don't think I'd even jump 50 meters. So you're well ahead of the curve. Anyway, I'm looking forward to seeing how you develop. Uh, stay injury free and you've certainly got my attention. Well done and good luck. Um, do you know what Jonathan Edwards' world record is? I think it's 18.29 meters. 18.29, the only jump ever 60, meters, or 60 feet. So before that, I find this curious. So that, that record's been there 28 years. Mm -hmm. Do you know how long the record stood before that? No. 20 minutes. Oh. He broke it, and then he broke it again 20 minutes later. <laughs> That's it. Uh, before I ha ask you these questions, I want to know real quick. Um, you said in one of your videos, I think it was at Monaco, that what you really want in life is to be tall. How are you doing on that? Well. Is it coming along? I don't know. No? I don't know. Like, the doctor told me that I was going to grow big, but I don't right. see it. I don't haven't see seen it quite yet? OK, here, grab one of these. What do you got? What did it say? Oh, sports and leisure. Layups. Who was your favorite athlete as a kid? Uh, Usain Bolt. Usain Bolt. Uh, who's the favorite athlete at your university? Me. <laughs> <laughs> yep. When you're not competing, how do you relax? Sleep. Sleep and then do you nap? No, I sleep a lot. Just sleep a lot. Like how much is a lot? Like, I, I practice at 10. Coach Gaffey will wake me at 10. 10 o'clock. Good. Uh, is fishing a sport? Yes or no? Uh-uh. I'm with you. Who says fishing's a sport? All you got? It's not a sport. The other side doesn't know it's playing. Uh, <laughs> is running fun? Well, my running workouts are fun. They are? Yeah. OK, good. Uh, give me the coaches saying that um, you can't get out of your head. One hippie. <laughs> one hippie, one hippie. One, one hippie. <laughs> Yeah, we do have that a lot. Is there a reason you don't want to take all the jumps? I guess save my legs for the next competition, I guess. Yeah. OK, before I let you go, what are your, what are your, what are your goals for 24? To make the Olympic team, to win, to do good. A lot of good. Mm -hmm. A lot of good. OK, that's an admirable goal. Hold on, what, uh, Grant is here again, yes? Oh, sorry, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. I have a question, Jaden. Yes? Um, so when you walk down, I, if I'm not mistaken, um, that felt like it looked like one of your longest run up ever. Can you please explain why you take a short approach, please? That's a question for coach. Oh. <laughs> You're going to blame it on the other guy? Yeah, I did admire you walked all the way down. I thought you'd start halfway, so that was awesome that you did that. Thing. So that was great. Uh, do we have a question? We, we'll, we have time for a question from the audience. Does anybody have one that wants to ask? Anybody here? Or, uh, Jerry and Scott, good. Jerry, uh, I'm sorry, you are? No, I'm going here, you uh, got the microphone. Hibby, you like to cook? Mm hmm If you had to make one plate, what would, what would it be? Well, I mean, oxtails for sure. <laughs> Rice and beans and plantains. <laughs> I don't know what we're having after this, but I could go for that if you want to you know, leave here and go upstairs and get after it. Uh, Jaden Hibbert, congratulations on being a finalist. Have a seat as we welcome our final men's finalist. Two days, too good. Twice. Leo Neugebauer's first decathlon of the season was a dominating performance in front of a friendly Longhorn crowd at the Texas Relays in Austin. His second decathlon of the season was a dominating performance in front of a friendly Longhorn crowd at the NCAA Championships in Austin. To win his first national title, Neugebauer had to get by top seeded Kyle Garland, and it took seven PRs and 10 events and a collegiate record 8,836 points to do it. His total, the eighth best mark all time, a German national record, and a reason to celebrate in Texas. An emotional Neugebauer turning his victory lap 
into an all-out sprint down the backstretch of Mike A. Meyer Stadium to share his joy with his people. Leo the Longhorn, Leo the German, Leo the 2023 Bowerman finalist. Wow. So I think I've come up with this, right? You were great at the Texas Relays, and you were great at the National Championships in Austin. So if the Olympics come to Austin, bang. Now, I don't know if they got 4.2 billion or whatever it'd take to get there, but that'd be the way to go. Uh, you had been working up to this, right? We have a, I go through, you got a lot of high deck finishes, a lot of high heptathlon finishes, but until that one in the National Championship, that was the first one you got the top of the podium. What's it feel like to stand on the top of the podium after building to that? Um, I would say it started at the Texas Relays because that's when I qualified for the, the World mm -hmm. Championships and the Olympics. That's when it kind of made click. And uh, that's where it showed kind of like what, I, what potential I have to myself too. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and it just, it just felt great. I've been like all these years fighting with Kyle and with Aiden for like the top three spaces. Mm -hmm. um, and I've always been second and third. And this is the first time winning the NCs. So it's a national championship, which is amazing. It's also a national record. What's it mean to have the German national record? Oh, I beat it by like, I think four points. So like barely, but that still so, counts. It still counts, right? Still counts. All you had to do is beat it by one. I know, I know. Were you scared a little bit that I'm not going to get it at the 1500? Yeah, when you ran 77 in the final lap of the 1500, I was worried hey, a little I bit. I honestly. tried my best. I promise. I okay. tried my best. I didn't know if you really had had it dialed in that much. Well, if I run 77, I still got it by four points. <laughs> I mean, we calculated it out before. So. Mm -hmm. But it, it is like to have that, your name in, in, in those record books is what? Oh, it means the world to me, especially because it, the German record's been standing there for 39 years. Yep. And uh, finally breaking that is just like, for, just for the country in general, huge. Oh. Why do I have this? My oh, necklace yeah. is a little bit. Oh, OK. Yeah. The teeth. You know, yeah, what, what, is, what are, is that? Is it a special representation in the necklace we should know about or just uh, ornamented? Um, so Ornamental. Is, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Does it work? Mm -mm. No. no. Hello? No. Hello? Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. Calling all cars. Um, yeah. <laughs> so these are like uh, traditional, like Cameroonian. Um, I think it's like supposed to be like elephant teeth mm -hmm. or something like that. It's like very traditional. And yeah. Is your dad ever disappointed you're not a soccer player? Um, maybe a little bit, but you know, I do. I would say I do pretty good in track. So yeah, that's I what think makes so. Me proud. Yeah, I just never. <laughs> you never know. The soccer people. They, once you get a hold of them, they're they're tough to go. Uh, give me of uh, the ten events. Which one do you love? Um, I would say the fifteen hundred. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was born at night. It wasn't last night. <laughs> um, I would say probably the the long jump. Okay. And you can't say 1500, but which one do you like? Oh, God, this is. Um, is it drag? Yeah, I got to just kind of get through this to get to the next one. I would say maybe high jump. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Juwan. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, give me, tell me kind of the. We touched on this with Jaden, uh, the, the, the cultural transition you have to make from a kid that grew up near Stuttgart, Germany, and you come to Austin, Texas. Um, it's a big transition, especially like I've never been to the U.S. before that. And um, hold on, hello, hello. Okay, I'll hold this. Perfect. Um, it's a big transition, just because like okay, it's not gonna work. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, just because I've never been to the U.S., I came here without friends, without family and stuff. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so but UT is like a great place, great coaches, great teammates, and I feel I feel good there. We're gonna throw over a grant with your coach, and we're gonna work on this real quick. Um, he said that the record stood for 39 years. Yes. And while we were over there talking, we were like, this is remarkable. Tell me about the hard work and dedication that went into that event. Oh, God. Or, the, excuse me, the events. The events, yes. No, Leo is definitely a guy that trains insanely hard. Like, it started, it, when I say this, I just found out about this, like, over coffee a few weeks ago. This guy wakes up at 6 a.m., does yoga for 30 minutes. We'll do all his prep work, stretch, do all that, go to class, come to us. It, it's, the guy works his butt off, which is insane. And uh, yeah, he's, uh, it's a pleasure to work with him. So. We, talk, we talk about those intangibles, yeah. you know, that, that it or that, that click that athletes have. What's that in, in Leo? Oh gosh. 
I didn't mean to push no, you on the spot. No, no, no. That's a tough. <laughs> it's a tough one because it's in each of the events, it's something different. So, um, but the the intangible with him is, for him, he works. If something goes wrong, he figures it out why it went wrong, and he fixes it, right. and he builds off of that. So that would be for me his intangible. Like that's just something that people don't have. See, I'm still trying to figure out what John Anderson's intangible is, but you know, he's still the host of this show while everybody's still watching and still yeah. wants him to be the host, but I'm still trying to, oh, excuse me. You, I know, for a little, for a little while longer, but believe me, I'm watching to see if you got the knife ready for my back <laughs> when it comes through. That's for sure. Um, before I get to these, I want to know, uh, in your upbringing, in Sukkot, what, what is it that you had growing up that allowed you to be successful today? Um, I would say uh, the community around me. Um, I had great friends, great teammates. Uh, we were like kind of a, like our club. We were a multi-club. Everybody was doing the decathlon. And we had like a team of four or five guys. We were always together, pushing each other, mm -hmm. talking to each other during the competition. And I think that just made everything fun and made me keep doing it. And they were also encouraging me through like hard times and stuff. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they brought me also here where I'm at right now. I know this isn't uh, uh, elephant's teeth, but is that your championship ring? It is. I knew you guys were gonna win that. I called it. <laughs> Didn't I, Flo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shaking his head. I had you the whole way. Uh, what are we, let's see, what are, what are you gonna talk about? Right here. All right, entertainment, that'll be great. Who's your most entertaining teammate? Um, honestly, Coach Flo. That, does that count? Can I say that? Sure, I can go with that, yeah. He's, he's funny, he's, okay. he's hilarious. All right, um, what Taylor Swift era are you? I know no songs, I'm sorry. I just, I'm not a Swifty at all, I'm sorry. Wow, I'm sorry. look at that. <laughs> okay, uh, give me a, a, a German act that I have no idea about, but I should. What do you mean by a German act? Like? Like, like Taylor Swift's an American act. Like, like, is there a German pop star I should know? Mm, do you know Kalsha Candela? <laughs> I do not. They're probably like the most famous pop band in Germany. Okay. Would, how much would you pay to see them? I actually saw them like two weeks ago. When you were home? Comps? Comps? Yeah, should you get in for free because you're like the German national. I was first row. I'm, I made friends with them. That is fantastic. You know. That's what I want to know. Uh, what's your best binge watch? Um, I would say Modern Family. Modern Family, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, who plays you in a movie about your life? Mm, Will Smith. <laughs> would you settle for Kyle Garland? Yes, okay, definitely. If it came through. Definitely. Okay. Uh, I don't think you'll know that one, so I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let it go. Um, too German for that? Pardon me? I'm too German for that? No, I just think it's, uh, my daughter gave it to me, and I'm like, I can't ask a grown man that question. Um, <laughs> I, can't, I can't do that. Uh, audience, uh, we got our national folks here. Anybody here? No? All right, how about we listen to the, the shout out we got for you? Leo, you big, crazy German. Das beste Langhorn. Der Zumfieger Olympiasieger. Or vielleicht der Baumensieger. Uh, my German's not as good as it used to be. I think I just said what I meant to say. But congratulations for not only getting recognized for your efforts and by being in attendance, but just congratulations from everyone who's ever laced up their shoes and started a multi-event. They know what kind of work you put in in order to, to be recognized, in order to put up the amount of points you put in, which before you, I didn't think it was possible, man. So thank you for broadening my horizons, broadening all of our horizons. And from one washed up Longhorn decathlete to the future of the sport, hook them and good luck. What's it like to have Trey Hardy bouncing around like that? To have somebody that knows the story, you know, that it's, knows what it's, it's like. It's crazy, especially like having such a figure in our university and being able to like continue that legacy right. just feels amazing. Having him around, just like hugging me after competitions, cheering for me, taking videos, whatever is amazing. And also the second I heard that voice, Leo, you crazy German. I knew it was him. I knew it was him. <laughs> what did he say in German, by the way, for those of us that don't, don't speak the language? 
What did he say? Yeah, what did he say? Oh, he said, um, it's a secret. It's, it's just for me. It's a personal message. Come on. The salt we tried out. <laughs> Was it PG-13? <laughs> Wait, are you, your parents are there, right? Yes. Should he repeat it or not? <laughs> All right, if mom says no, we'll, we will let it go. Uh, Leo Neugebauer, everybody. Those are our three, our three men's finalists. One of them will be the 2023 Bowerman Award winner. Before we get to that, Grant with last year's Bowerman Award winner. I'm with my good friend, fierce competitor, Trey Cunningham. You won the Bowerman last year. Welcome to the family. What does it mean for... Jade and Kyle and Leo to be part of the, the family? I mean, I don't think anyone understands. This is the first time all these athletes that are nominated for this, this is not up to them. They have been judged by a panel of people that they probably don't even know, by us and a popular vote. Last year, I was so nervous because I couldn't compete out in front of all of y'all for the vote. and. I just remember being so gracious that I was nominated for it and what an honor it is. And I can't wait to see who wins tonight. I can't wait neither. I'm gonna send it over to my good friend, Mr. Hurt. <clears throat> Thanks a lot, Grant. Behind me is a slide and it says 2009. And when Sam Seams had a dream to bring this event together, I think you now can say, Sam, this is a success. How about a round of applause for him? <laughs> also to Carol, this year's president, and I know your convention's coming to an ending, but these athletes that we see behind us are because of all of you coaches who are out there who believe in this profession. So continue doing what you're doing and producing these types of athletes. So thank you as well. And then before I open this envelope, I have to thank all the people on the advisory board for Bowerman. We work on this all year long. We're already starting to work on next year's selections. So this is something that we do as a labor of love, and we will continue to do it to produce these kinds of athletes. To our finalists for this evening, congratulations to all of you. My good friend John Anderson said it earlier, he says you're all winners. And we are also winners because a couple of times John Anderson has tried to retire, but we keep wanting to bring him back. So thank you, John, for what you did. So the winner of the Bowerman is Jaden Hibbert. Sorry guys, I walk with my iPad everywhere. So. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests and fellow athletes, well, go on.
Firstly, I want to take a moment to express my deepest gratitude to God. Without his guidance, strength, and blessings, none of this would have been possible. I am truly humbled and thankful for the talents he has bestowed upon me, and I will always give him the glory because he was and is and will forever be my rock, guiding shield on this incredible journey. This moment is truly a dream come true, and I could say that it definitely made up for what happened in Budapest. As I look on the surface of this prestigious award, I see a reflection of a kid that God did not and will not give up on, and is also a reminder of how he can transform you from nothing to something great. I want to thank the organizers and the committee members of the Bauman for their efforts in using their platform to recognize the most decorated athletes in collegiate track and field. The dedication of showcasing our talents is truly appreciated and is commendable. There is a special person in the audience that I want to give a special shout out to is Uncle Ricky. Could you stand? Now, y'all yeah, listen, Un Uncle Ricky is a blueprint. Like, he saw the talent first. It was one day where I was competing at, I think it's a sports day or some championships, when I was in kindergarten. And he was like, hey, little boy, um, you're so fast. Where where's your mom? I was like. <laughs> <laughs> I said, she's over there in the bleachers. And I ran immediately, because my, <laughs> my mom was like, don't talk to strangers. <laughs> Anyways, he eventually found her, I don't know how, but he, the next day he offered me a scholarship to go to one of the most prestigious preparatory schools in Jamaica, Vast Prep, and even at Kingston College he paved the way, so I just want to give gratitude to you, Uncle Ricky, and I will always love and appreciate you. To my dad, who's in the audience, and my <laughs> Mr. Ebert, <laughs> and my mom, who's watching online. She's currently doing exams, so she couldn't be here. But you know, um, what you do in the background is truly commendable. I, I love you guys. Like, thank you for posting me on Facebook. <laughs> Words cannot say how much I, I appreciate you guys. I, I just love you guys for all that you have done. The intangible, the tangible. Sending me to parties that I shouldn't go, but you know, just thank you so much. Coach Travis, <sighs> thanks for dealing with me, Coach. Thanks for mending my overthinking. Thanks for um, always reminding me that even if I'm injured today, I'll be ready for the season. Thanks for not freaking out at Budapest when I was freaking out. Thanks for just being there. Thanks for waking me up for practice every day, every day. <laughs> Thanks for asking how my grades are. You're just a coach that everybody wants, and I truly love and respect you, coach, forever and ever, and I can say that on behalf of everybody uh, in the Razorback Nation. <laughs> Thanks to Coach Buck. Buck, yeah! <laughs> Matt Downs, Coach Case, Matt Clark, and my trainers who have been there for me every step of the way. Your guidance and unwavering belief in my abilities is truly appreciated. Thanks to the RGR Basic School, Vast Preparatory, and Kingston College for setting the foundation of my academics and inspiring track and field abilities. Special thanks goes to Auntie Hewlett and Uncle Audley Hewitt for funding my preparatory school and high school endeavors. Special thanks going to Coach Azuri and Coach Jeremy and Coach Welly for escalating my abilities to the point where I could be awarded a full ride to the U of A. Shout out to my country, Jamaica, my hometown, <laughs> Arc, uh, um, my hometown, Arnett Gardens, and the Razorback Nation at large. Thanks for voting for me, and thanks for the love and support you guys continue to contribute to my success. To Kyle and Leo, you are still him. Like, this doesn't define you, like, even though I have the trophy, it's yours too. <laughs> 
You both have done great things, and I will forever model your competition character and drive towards the sport. I say by leaving this, very simple, very simple. Don't stay up worrying while God's up working. Thank you. Congratulations. Don't leave Grant hanging. Wow, small island, but a lot of people on it, apparently. Um, before we get started with the, the women's finals, I want to just quickly uh, acknowledge the work of Justin Newton. He is the guy that has put together all the video packages that you see of each of our athletes, the tremendous open. Uh, all the video content in this show is, is courtesy of Justin, uh, and he does that for um, uh, our producers, um, all the... Uh, the entire program, the entire show. He's been up all last night and weeks putting this together, so everybody looks great. So we appreciate him. And with that, we go on to the women's finalist, and our first finalist is from the University of Texas, Julian Alfred. Julian Alfred, gone. The greatest female sprinter in the history of the University of Texas, and arguably the NCAA. She is a burnt orange blur. By God damn, when the juju train is on the track, you better watch out. Five national titles, five collegiate records, and an NCAA outdoor team championship in 23. The first woman to break seven seconds in the 60 did it three times, won both short sprints in Albuquerque in record time, then dazzled the home crowd in Austin outdoors on her birthday, no less. And she blew out all of her competition's candles. What a championship run. In a span of 90 minutes, Alfred led off for the Horns 4x100 meter champs, then defended her 100 meter crown, and followed that with a 200 meter title. The candles and the competition blown away. Hook em. Texas's Julian Alfred, a 2023 Bowerman finalist. You did a lot of stuff. I did. It's crazy. Uh, what was the best part of all those things that you did in the past season? Hmm. Can I just choose one moment or more than one? Uh, you're the barman finalist. You can answer however you choose. The best part, I would say, is winning the outdoor championship with my team. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Breaking the 200 indoor record, I was not expecting that at all. Didn't, that, didn't see that coming? I did not. Didn't train through that? No. Let's talk about the indoor success because 2022 was kind of this close. What was the difference between this close and 2023 when you swept everything? I think I got stronger mentally. Um, 2022 um, indoor championships, I broke the record in the prelim, mm -hmm. but in the finals, I think I just got ahead of myself and, you know, placed fifth. Um, but I think this year, I grew a lot mentally and physically. So your favorite race was the 200 in terms of winning that indoor, but you hate the 200, you tell me. I do not like the 200. No. Why do we not like the 200? It doesn't show. <laughs> it doesn't. I mean, as a competitor, you love winning. So every time I step on the track, I'll want to win. Mm -hmm. So I put my best foot forward. Um, but I think that the 200 is kind of pressuring to me um, as compared to like the 4x4, four four, you know, you're running for your team mm -hmm. and knowing that you have good team chemistry, you're running for somebody. And every time I run the 4x4, four four, I run for my team, but the 200 is like, mm -hmm. oh, here we go again. I just don't like it. You're, listen, you're entitled and it, like I said, it, it doesn't show. Uh, compare the, the young woman that showed up for the first time in the UT campus when you got there, and the one who'll be leaving now? Whoa. Um, I think the woman, that sh the child, <laughs> that showed up in um, 2019 um, at 17, I would describe her as, as sorry, probably shy. I'm still shy, um, but a bit timid, 
Um, I don't think I had my head on my shoulders as I do now. Um, I was a bit weak-minded as well. Um, the woman living UT, I'm a lot stronger mentally, physically, um, emotionally, spiritually as well. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have. It seems like enough. <laughs> uh, what, what part does that fellow over there playing at Flow? He plays a huge part in my <laughs> success. In what ways? Um, I think Coach Flo is like a dad, a mentor, and I'm sure my teammates can also agree to this, like a dad, a mentor, really a coach. He's also a friend mm -hmm. when it matters. Um, but he's, he's all of that to us. And you know, he's always a phone call away, and that's what we need, you know, as teenagers, as people growing up. We also need somebody who's there to like hear us whenever we need to be heard. Mm -hmm. And before we get to him, I want to know how being so close a couple of times to that national championship indoor led to the success and the 83 points you put up in Austin in June? I think falling short so many times hurts us each time. And I think that um, after indoor, we had to give Coach Flo, you know, what he's been, you know, working towards and, you know, the sacrifices that he's made for us. And also it was our home track. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't allow anybody to beat us on our home track at all. Listen, defend your turf right. or your oval. Um, I'm curious to hear what he has to say. Well, Grant? I know I was talking with Coach Flo, so I, I looked at the time. and He said we were kind of in time crunch. He said his flight's at 8.50, so we got you know, to add a little bit of oomph to this right now. I think you're going to be late to your flight, so just go ahead and rebook right now. But go ahead. Tell me about from the transition from indoors to outdoors and how – Miss Julian Alfred was just that remarkable in, in, in both aspects of it. Um, I, I think success and failure are best friends if they're not married to each other. And I think the one thing we lose inside of as of late is that is a lack of appreciation for failure and coming up short. And anxiety, depression, all this stuff comes from the lack of appreciation for failure, coming up short, and then rebuilding yourself, becoming something bigger and different. Um, Julian has definitely had rough roads, and those rough roads created this. And I'm just really proud of the creation of coming up short and being disappointed and crying, lots of crying, lots of, <laughs> lots of ruining Coach Flo's jackets. But in the end, I think it's worth it because that's, that's what you want. You just, you know, I, I think now we just, internet and all this stuff, is taking away from appreciation of six, uh, failure coming up short and understanding that they're married together. They're best friends because you learn more when after you fail than when you succeed. John, can you tell me about a good marriage that you that you know that that works hand in hand with you? A good what? Good marriage. I've only had one, so I'm thinking, you know, <laughs> right? How how are we doing? Okay, I got a thumbs up from over there. Uh, coach isn't the only one that's proud of you. We got another person we would like to chime in on your success. Hi, my name is Courtney Ocolo, 2016 Bowerman winner and Texas Longhorn. Julian, you had an amazing season. I want to wish you the best of luck. I know this is just the beginning. I think right now she's the only Texas. Yeah. You okay if you get company? She totally <laughs> wants company. Excellent. Here, grab a card. It's going to be fine. Trust me. You, you put up with me. Oh, science and nature. Fantastic. Oh my goodness. If you, if, you saw a bear, would you, if you saw a bear, would you run away or would you fight it? I would run. You would run? Okay. Definitely. Um, physics, biology, chemistry. You got a favorite? I don't. I don't like science. But what was your major? What did I major in? Yeah. Youth and Community Studies. Perfect. I'm good with that. <laughs> uh, who broke the four minute mile? The who? Who broke the four minute mile? I don't know. Okay. That's two years in a row people couldn't answer Roger, Roger Bannister. It's okay. Oh, my bad. Uh, would you rather uh, explore the moon or the bottom of the ocean? I don't think I'll want to go to the ocean. I don't like the ocean that much. Isn't, uh, isn't, isn't St. Lucia surrounded by the ocean? Yeah, it is. How many, how many times in St. Lucia? 
fit in Texas? A lot. 1,200 times. 1,200? 1,200 times. Oh. Uh, survival of the fittest. Which of your teammates is left standing? I would say Dijanae. Dijanae Oakley. She's a, she's a sophomore. Okay. I would say Dijanae. And last one, uh, superpower you wish you had, because you already have speed. Hmm, that's a tough one. I'll probably be invincible. Invisible? Yeah. That's shy people would like to do that. Right? <laughs> yes. Like right now, would you so like to be invisible? Definitely. We'll let you be done. <laughs> Julian Alfred, everyone. Our next finalist from the University of Florida is Jasmine Moore. Jasmine Moore's resume is the record book, and her nickname is 157. Run it up. Florida coaches dove more that in anticipation of her becoming the first American woman to break 15 meters in the triple jump and 7 meters in the long jump. Done and at the same meet, surpassed both those marks while sweeping the events in collegiate record fashion at the NCAA Indoor Championships. In June, even with a taped up ankle, Moore managed to add another NCAA title in Austin and another record with the first ever 48-foot triple jump by a collegian outdoors. A fitting finale to a historic season and an unmatched career on the runway. Seven national championships, 10 SEC championships. It's great to be 157 and a 2023 Bowerman finalist, Florida's Jasmine Moore. Yay for you. Yeah. Uh, we have, we have a, a fact here we need to correct. It wasn't 10 SEC titles, it was how many? 11. 11. I lost one pre-pandemic. <laughs> I blame the record keeping. I don't know. So 11. I yes. apologize I shorted you one. You know Earl would correct you. Pardon me? Earl. Yes. My dad, you know. Yes. Oh, he showed it to me. Uh-huh. Yeah, good for him. <laughs> yeah. We hear from Earl frequently. Y'all heard a lot last year. Yeah, it is. That's all right. But we're glad you are here this year. Uh, this is not the most important thing, but it's the thing that I am most curious about. Why do you have an S in your name, Jasmine, and not a Z? Because don't we say Jasmine? And that's why I struggle to pronounce my name sometimes. Your own name? Yeah, because I'm like, Jasmine, yeah. you know? And then you have to think it was a Z, Jasmine. Okay. So. Uh, have you journaled today? I haven't, no. No. Only whenever I'm like, Working out, thinking about what I need to do on the track, but today was a rest day. So. Good for you, rest day. What's, what's, and I don't want to delve too deeply, but I, I watch you and you sit there and you're writing. Like, what kind of thoughts are we putting down? What are we, you know, what are we, uh, what are we recording that helps us down the road? Just mainly think about what I need to do on the runway, just kind of believing in myself, giving myself that extra boost, the confidence. Um, normally, writing something, trusting the Lord. Um, yeah, I think about my steps and everything like that. Uh, do you have a favorite of your seven NCAA titles? Probably the first one, because it was long jump, and that one was kind of unexpected. Mm -hmm. I struggle sometimes in that event, so that was a good one. Uh, the struggle was real in Austin. You finished third. It's the first oh, yeah. one you ever lose, and I found you, but I was like, we'd never seen you react mm -hmm. to not winning. Yeah. How did you regroup and go, okay, I still have the other one, because it's just, success upon success upon success. Yeah, I couldn't really, you know, think about that one too long. I couldn't feel sorry for myself because I was thankful that I did have another opportunity in the triple mm -hmm. jump. So mainly just picking myself back up and just getting ready. But yeah, that one definitely hurt, but I was happy triple jump worked out. Is there a secret to be good at both of these things? Because they look like they should be identical, like if they should transfer one to one easily. Mm -hmm. I don't think they do. No, I mean, my approach is the same, but just uh -huh. thinking about them, um, um, sometimes triple jump, I forget how to do it, just because it's a little more complicated. I just forget. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it always comes back, obviously. But yeah, they're different. Um, other than that, mm -hmm. that's good, yeah. Uh, <laughs> what's Bowerman winner uh, Katura Orji down there mean to you? Oh, uh, well, <laughs> she was a reason why I went to, you know, another school before, mm -hmm. and I just looked up to... <laughs> But she's obviously someone I really look up to, and I still, and so now I'd be able to compete against her at USA's, and hopefully now more in the future since 
done with college and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but she's a great inspiration just as a person. And I remember my freshman year, um, she gave me a PDF of just things, you know, to think about when I'm in college and I still have it. And yeah, I looked at it the other day. So really grateful. That's tremendous. <laughs> and what fit when you, when you switch, what fit with Gainesville and the Gators? Um, just the people. I really do love Florida, and I love Coach Nick and my teammates and um, everyone there. And it's hard to be upset whenever it's 70 degrees in December and the sure. sun's always shining. So, yeah. Uh, we don't want you to feel cheated because we showed you uh, uh, Jaden's 58, seven and a half. Grant, real quick, run down, run down to 49, seven for me. I'm on the board. <laughs> like, look at this. It's Ooh. foolish. <laughs> All right, then while he gets back up to, to Coach Peterson, I'm just going to ask you real quick, what's the Honda Sports Award? You, you, you don't have the Bowerman yet, but what's the Honda Sports Award? Um, it's, uh, <laughs> it's just another award given to women athletes. Um, I was grateful to win that one. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's another awesome award. Just a lot of awards, a lot of medals, <laughs> a lot of first place. Grant? Before we get started, Melendez, you're not getting out of this. Just want to say hi to you. You look great. <laughs> But with all the coaches that we have, Coach Peterson, and the success, I'm going to go ahead and claim it, jumps you. Sorry for anybody that wants to throw stones at me, but I'm just going to go ahead and claim it. I got my dog up here. But we know Jasmine is a perfectionist. But how do you, how do you handle that? Well, it, uh, it's part of what makes her so great. I mean, from training to technique, there's nothing she's not going to do perfect. Um, she's going to be very diligent about how she goes about her day, whether it's training, nutrition, everything. She's going to take care of everything, dot the, dot the I's and cross the T's. Um, yeah, it could, uh, it can cause some frustration at times, which in this training group we've all seen. Um, but I wouldn't change it for the world because it's what makes her tick and it's what makes her, uh, you know, it's what made her maybe have arguably the greatest horizontal jumper in collegiate history. My opinion, of course, but. So the thing is, everybody's, everybody's clapping, but everybody knows J.A.'s my dog. 83, right? State Are you record? At me? Yeah. 83, state record in a triple jump? I, no, not state record, just a school record. School record. I don't want to overshoot it. That's the year I was born. So, <laughs> I know. <laughs> But yeah, I'll tell the story quick. I had, the, I had my school uh, triple jump record because uh, 1983 was the first year it was a, an event in the state and I had a legal jump. <laughs> Bam. Um, I, think, I think, yeah, it was gone two weeks later, but you know, I had a brief moment of glory. Um, so there's really kind of only one person in the history of the NCAA in jumps that's comparable to what you did and he sits right down in front, right? <laughs> So we're going to hear from him right now. So this is going to be my shout out to Jasmine Moore, the one that just wants more. Um, if there's anybody that I could look back uh, in our collegiate uh, history that is a person that is just like me, but uh, just a female, I would say it's probably just Jasmine. Uh, she has done everything that I've done um, just in a different gender. Uh, so um, she has much, much, much respect. Um, her entire family is amazing. She's a great competitor. Um, if, if it's one thing that I could give her, it's just more of my confidence. I think that she should be able to walk around and to her own tour, uh, horn sometimes. But uh, Jasmine, you've done literally everything. Um, I can't make you do anything else. You've done everything that, that you could have done uh, for two years and years to, in, a, in a years to come. We both represent the Puma family now. Um, and I, I, I look at you as an inspiration uh, for, you know, my, my next generation. And I also uh, really appreciate how you, you know, definitely always want to see and seek out inspiration for others. So while you inspire me and you in, 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 in indirectly and directly inspire others, um, I thank you for that. And I definitely wish you an amazing good luck on this second time around for the environment. Now we, know it, now we know why Courtney was so short. Um, Mar Marquise took most of her time. Uh, before I get to the, to the nonsense, I do want to ask you how your previous Olympic and World Championship experiences you hope will shape what comes here in 24. 
Yeah, so I've had a lot of disappointment at the big stage um, when it comes to international senior competitions. So I'm just going to keep knocking at the door and keep working hard. And uh, eventually I'll get what I want. So <laughs> I'm praying that 2024 is just a year of many blessings and everything I could hope for. I think I know, but what do you want? I mean, I want a medal. Okay. Yeah. Good enough. That's a We're only down to two things. You're either going to talk about people and places or history. Let's do people and places. Oh, I had to choose. It's all right. Okay. We, we can go <laughs> That's okay, because we'll talk about people and places. I want to talk about your dad, <laughs> if I could. Uh, if you guys haven't seen the high school musical TikTok with her Oh my and gosh, dad, he's going to kill me for that. Is he? It was amazing. Did you have to talk him into it? Was he the lead voice? What happened? I mean, it just took him a really, really long time. He was kind of slowing me down and messed up on a couple of the words. But other than that, he, he doesn't really like to get into my TikToks, but... He did that one for me. You're prolific on TikTok. Really? You think yeah, so? I think you got a lot of stuff, yeah. <laughs> and the, but the, the high school musical with your dad is, is pretty uh, remarkable. Yeah. Uh, people, do I know any other North Texas cheetah? Which is your team when you grew up yes. on? Yes. Um, you know, Rosie. Oh, yeah, she runs for Arkansas. Rosie Effion. Yes. She was a North mm -hmm. Texas cheetah. Yes. All right. I'll Britain could have answered that question. <laughs> uh, who's the friend you've known the longest? Uh, well, my best friend here, I've known her since... Who is she? Khadija. I've known her since like, oh my gosh, we were a fetus. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's like how I, long it feels. Yeah, <laughs> I got a friend that I go back to a bowling nursery, but it's not like not the, back to the ultrasound that is. That's amazing. Uh, favorite place on campus that's not the track. I don't really go on campus that much, but. Jaden's online and you're not at the track either. <laughs> Probably the dining hall. Okay. That was good. Uh, because of track, a place that you've traveled to that you never thought you would have traveled to? Peru. Peru. No, me. Cuba. I'll say Cuba because, yeah. Okay. Not a lot uh, give me a track athlete you'd pay to watch. Mm, probably definitely Dindy or Jaden. Okay. I love the jumps, so. Uh, most famous person in your cell phone? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I can't even think of that one okay. next. Good. Um, <laughs> do you have a favorite celebrity Chris? Favorite celebrity Chris? Yeah, like Evans or um, Brock or... Oh, Jenner. No, Kardashian. Yeah, she's a Jenner. She's a Jenner. Chris Jenner. Yeah. You watch that stuff? Of course. Anything reality TV, I eat it up. Really? Mm -hmm. Who, what, like, what should I be watching? This is perfect for you. The Golden Bachelor. <laughs> the Golden Bachelor. <laughs> oh. I don't even know if I ask because it's age or I'm handsome. I'm just, <laughs> just going to let it go and wish you the best. And thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for being gracious every time we've had to talk over the last couple of years. Yes. Uh, Jazz and Moore, everybody. Fantastic. And our last finalist from the University of Arkansas is Britton Wilson. The 400 meters is hard. The 400 meter hurdles, even harder. Running them both? on the same day is preposterous. But then so is Britton Wilson. It's not just the times. Oh my goodness! It's the other stuff. 600, collegiate record. 400, national title. First sub 50 indoors, American record. Four by four anchor leg in Albuquerque. Fastest carry on a relay squad that ran an all time world best. That last one also capped another Razorbacks National Championship. And Wilson's legend only grew outdoors. She lowered the 400 meter record three times while winning her long hurdle races by huge margins on short rest. It's just a heat, Britain, just a heat. 49-40. Her SEC double quieted skeptics by leaving them speechless. A record 49-13 in the flat, followed by 53-28 over the barriers an hour later. A near-perfect season ended in Austin, but not before Wilson won a legion of admirers for the audacity of her effort. A 2023 Bowerman finalist, Arkansas's Britton Wilson. Um, 
so can you finally tell me now about the tape on your shin? Oh, from this spring yeah. that every time I said, how's it? And you're like, no, I'm fine. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. I was not fine. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it was a stress fracture. A grade four stress fracture in this shin and a grade two in this shin. And you kept saying, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Yeah. Were you trying, trying to convince me or were you trying to convince yourself <laughs> at the time? A little bit of both. And I just wanted people to stop asking about it. So, because yeah. people noticed the tape. So I was trying to just. It does sort of point it out, right? Yeah. yeah, it does. It does draw attention to it. Um, it was a season of tremendous highs and a seventh. How do you look back now with a few months to kind of process everything? How do you look back on the season? Yeah, um, it's hard to forget the seventh place or just like not winning. But um, I have been learning throughout this year to give myself grace and to um, be proud of myself and really appreciate my accomplishments. So. That came um, further on in the season, but I'm, I feel like now I'm at a place where I can look back at the season and be really proud of myself. So uh, I saw you there were you, there were tears in Austin for you. Julian has like that'd be a great country song, "Tears in Austin." Right? Yeah, that would be that would see what came up of that. Uh, how do we grow from that? How do we how do we grow from that to whatever we would like to come next in 24 or beyond? Yeah, um, I think this whole season was a season of growth for me. So um, all the stuff that I had experienced and went through, I think has definitely made me into a better person and a better athlete um, going into 2024. So I'm taking all the, the highs and the lows with me into new experiences this year. Of the many successes that you had, mm -hmm. which one when you crossed the line and looked at it and you just went, <laughs> wow, I, I just did that. <laughs> um, the indoor 400 at nationals. Um, because I had just came back from COVID and I was just ha like indoor just wasn't really looking that great for me, mm -hmm. but I knew I wanted to just try to finish strong. So my goal was to just finish strong, but I didn't expect to do all that. So it was, it was incredible. I feel like that was a whole good weekend, right? Cause you win yeah. and then the four by four set a world best mm -hmm. and you won the whole championship. Yeah, it was great. We were, we were all so excited. Yeah. That seems like that. For somebody who didn't think that was all going to go so well, that was, that was a pretty decent weekend, right? Yes. <laughs> uh, which event are we running moving forward? Are we, at one point, do we have to pick one? No. Okay. Certainly not. Okay, so what are we doing here in the Olympic here? Oh, no, John. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk later. No, we're talking now. Everybody's here. It doesn't do any good to talk later. <laughs> I don't know. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Okay. Uh, you know who might know? My Grant, bestie? Grant might have a guy that wouldn't know. <laughs> I know Britton, and I know she's probably still thinking about that seventh place loss, but correct me if I'm wrong. I counted three indoor collegiate records and one outdoor collegiate record in a, what we said, a world best, right, J.A.? Yep. In a world best. I don't think that's something we should, we should hang our head on at the Bowerman. Well. When your goals are high, I think that's a part of it, you know, and I think that when every time she lines up, she expects to win, and, and that's what we train for, that's what, that's what we want to accomplish, and I think for most of you guys, you got, you got to understand something. If you lose a race, you never lose if you learn something, and, and that's a part of it that I always instill in my athletes, that you never lose unless you learn something. And I think she learned a lot about herself and, and what it's going to take to be a champion and continue to move herself forward as a professional athlete. So I can say going into 2024, we have, I can't, my suit's kind of tight. This don't fit, so I just got to put my, <laughs> Jay, back to you, brother. Uh, so how long have you known Grant, by the way? Oh, man. Um, I've known Grant since I was like 14. 14. Um, yeah. We used to see each other a lot at high school indoor meets. And I used to be a fangirl of him. Did you? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that worn off? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so as you see, we've gone through. We've heard from Jonathan Edwards. We've heard from Dan O'Brien. Uh, we've heard from Marquis Dendy. So you, we're not leaving you out. Hi, Britain. I just want to take a moment and say congratulations on such an amazing year. You defied odds. You truly blew my mind. I remember watching just being absolutely amazed by everything you did and so inspired by you. I'm just so excited to see everything you're going to do in the future. And like I said, 
trials are to test our faith and I'm just so excited and proud for how much you've grown this year what an amazing athlete you are and the woman that you're becoming and I can't wait to see all you're gonna do so best of luck so that seems awesome <laughs> right and I'm assume you and Sid are, are, are pals but like okay but she's standing in the way of a lot of things that you would like to do <laughs> I mean, I've, I've looked up to Sydney, and it's cool to call her a friend now. It's, like, incredible to have her, at, like, mm -hmm. as a partner and a friend. But, you know, I hope to, you it's know. okay. I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> so I have, I have this, the questions, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put those aside. Okay. Uh, because I know some of the other things you love are music and makeup and these singing. So I, you offered to do a smoky eye for me makeup-wise, which would have been... Did. Wonderful. You would so, you would yeah, say. I just didn't have time. Um, <laughs> and plus, I don't know that as the foundation would have matched. But anyway, uh, but a few years ago, Brigitte Barrett was uh, kind enough to sing for us. Mm. So, what do you have for me? Will you sing a little something for us? Oh. Uh, do it. Do it. <laughs> Honestly, your mom um, said if I asked, you would. Why would she so, say that? So, <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm you kinda, don't want to I disappoint your mother, fright. do you? She's not disappointed. <laughs> what do you got? Um, maybe next time. No, what do we have? <laughs> Mariana Grande, that's your girl? I, that is my girl. Me and Ariana go like who, this. Who knows an Ariana Grande? It's, I don't. Anybody? Position, can you sing that? No. <laughs> I'm so nervous. How about this? Nobody's going to eat until you sing. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Maybe later. Maybe later. Okay. And then she did say, I have to ask you about John Anderson. I, I'm de after the Golden oh Bachelor, I'm deathly afraid to hear the answer to this question. But okay. what do we have? What, about, what should I know about John Anderson? So, um, a minute ago, I want to say it was like indoor SECs. Um, there was another person that would like talk at the meets and her name was Jill Montgomery. I'm aware. Yes, and um, I couldn't remember your name. And so I was like, mom, where's Jill? And then she was like, he's right there. So <laughs> for like, since then and now, we refer to you as Jill in our household. So. Um, it's like living the Grant Holloway nightmare all over. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's cute. Sure. Listen, it might be the Golden Bachelor, near as I can tell, but yeah, but I'd, you're not the first. Grant, that was his thing. He just totally wanted to meet Jill Montgomery instead of getting stuck with me. I love it. I love so, it for you. That's all right. We'll have her here next year to host. It'll be fantastic. You guys oh. will have a great time. I'll watch it. No, it's good. Grant, what? Are you, oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Grant will be hosting next year. All right. I guess I'm not because nobody clearly got excited. So it looks like I'm stuck here on the right side of the stage one more year. Thanks, guys. That was your test. <laughs> But I'm here with Abby, um, this, with all the Bowman finalists, and for you to come back another, another year in Colorado. I need to switch the stage. But to come back to Colorado again, what does it mean you know, for you? Yeah, um, it's just so inspiring to even me to be around all of these past winners, all of these finalists, seeing all the hype videos. It makes me excited. I know it's only December, but I'm like ready to get back out there now. So. It's with, exciting. I, I believe it. With everything going on, what can you instill into these Bowerman finalists? That, that the nerves or anything that you, that you experienced last year, what can you instill in them right now? Um, enjoy the moment. Take a deep breath. You guys are all here because of uh, many, many things that you have done that have led up to this moment. This is the fun part. So just breathe. It's fun. Woosah. Woosah. Exactly. <sighs> Miss Alfreda, it's all yours. All right. Thank you. Uh, just want to share a little personal something before we start. Uh, Longtime administrator in this business, former track coach, and one of the women finalists, her father played on our basketball team at VCU. And I see a lot of him in her. I see a lot of her mother in her because she was on our first dance team at VCU. So it comes full circle. But the one thing that strikes me the most about everybody who is sitting here as a finalist, it takes a village. As I spoke to the young ladies today and even some of the young men, they were always telling me about all the people in their lives who've helped them get here. 
and it was parents, it was family, it was coaches, it was fellow athletes who believed in what they could do. So continue to be the best that you can be, young ladies. It's an awesome opportunity, and as the people said earlier, welcome to the family. Okay, I'm gonna be one of these people. The 2023 Barman winner for the Women's Award is Julian Alford. I thought I'd be more prepared, uh, but I don't think I've, I don't know. It's a very surreal moment for me, and uh, I'm trying not to cry. <laughs> um, tonight is a special night, not just for me, but for Texas, winning the second Bowman Award. <laughs> My country, who I know, I'm sure they're celebrating somewhere. Um, <laughs> my mom, my other family members at home, Coach Flo, Ricky, Kayla, Ms. Gwen, Clint, let's not forget Ashley and Jake. <sighs> oh my goodness. And let's not forget my teammates who are back in Austin. I'm sure they're celebrating as well and happy for me. To all of you, I say thank you. Without you guys, and like you just mentioned tonight, it takes a village to get you to where you are. And I would give thanks to these people over and over again, because without them, I wouldn't be here today. Most importantly, I have to give thanks to God for the gift that he has blessed me with to the hard times that I encountered, the places he, had, he has led me, and the hands he left me in, which is close flows. I want to give you a special thanks because you have molded me into the person that I am today. I have been at Texas since I was 17, now 22. And to most, it may not seem like a long time, but it was quite a journey for me. From my season ending in 2019 to COVID-19, spoiling the party which caused me to be stuck in the US. <laughs> <laughs> With my borders closed, I had nowhere to go at all. 2022 and 2023, I saw the light that my mom always spoke about. The times I always prayed for. Through it all, you were there. You've been a dad, a mentor, a friend, a coach, and I'll always be grateful for you. I thank you for taking me under your wing. I thank you for taking me under your wing and building me your long lectures <laughs> when I was hard on myself. And I apologize for all my ugly cries in your office <laughs> and on the phone. <laughs> thank you for bringing the, this person in. Thank you for bringing out this person in me, sorry. 
The athletic staff can tell you, it took some time to get to this point. I also cried in their office and over the phone. I cry a lot. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> to my mom, who came all the way from St. Lucia to be here with me tonight, I really want to say thank you for the sacrifices that you've made for all of us, myself and my four other siblings. I owe it to you to show you that all your hard work did not go to waste. And it sucks that my dad couldn't be here tonight to celebrate with me. And I know that he'll be proud of me to see how far I've come. Before I end, I want to leave my favorite scripture, which goes, which, which is Romans 8, 18, which says, the pain that you're feeling can't compare to the joy that's coming. And I feel like this is a reflection of my career. And I know that there may be somebody out there who may be struggling in their career, maybe a freshman, or maybe whatever journey that you're on. I would say to you, don't stop. Don't give up on yourself. Trust the process. And that light you've been praying for and hoping for is going to come one day. Thank you. Uh, anything I could add would just ruin the rest of the evening. My congratulations to Britton, Jasmine, Julian. Oh, let me get off your muffle. It's okay. okay give you, oh, you like it? Yeah. Just compliment those three guys. Hey, you guys were amazing. Kyle, Jaden, Leo. Right. They have Keep names. up the great work. Perfect. Uh, you are the best people I know. Of. That's why I love coming here. The coaches, the athletes, everybody that puts this on. David Goldstein, who is in charge of this entire production back there somewhere going, those guys talked way too long. We're apologizing in advance. Uh, thank you so much. We'll see you again next year for the Bowerman. My name is Jill, and I appreciate you having me. Thank you. <laughs>